but reminds me that the 10 must system is in effect in the scoring. So from the Olympia in Detroit, we take you now up to the center of the ring for Roy Tracy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The next major boxing attraction here at the Olympia Stadium is Wednesday, January 5th. The great Ray Robinson, former middleweight champ, meets Joey Rendon of Roxbury, Massachusetts. That's Wednesday, January 5th. This is the major event, ladies and gentlemen. Ten rounds sanctioned by the Michigan State Athletic Board of Control, Mr. Floyd Stevens, chairman, who incidentally extends the season's greetings to all of you. The officials are the judges, Bill Appleton and Joe Lenahan. The timekeeper, Ray Goldman. Counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Maurice Rigla. The physician in attendance at the ringside, Dr. Joseph Kahalen. The referee, the very popular Lou Handler. This is the main event, 10 rounds. Introducing from Detroit, Michigan, wearing the white trunks, his weight, 179 pounds, Marty Marshall. His very worthy opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, wearing the blue trunks, his weight, 174 and a half, Harold Johnson. Shake hands, boys. This is an important fight. Go back now to your corners and come out fighting when the bell rings. Let's go. Both Marty Marshall and Harold Johnson with terrific incentive to win tonight. This is Marshall's first big money shot of any kind, and Harold Johnson is uh, attempting to uh, come back after losing a couple of tough ones here of late. That is Johnson weighing 174 and a half in the blue trunks, Marty Marshall, in the white trunks and when you have difficulty describing a man's style you say unorthodox and that is what we will have to say about that of marty marshall who recently as you know ko'd bob satterfield in a stunning upset when he was a six to one underdog johnson extremely capable and very anxious to make a terrific showing tonight Round one of a scheduled 10 rounder. So far it appears that Johnson has decided to spend most of his efforts on the midsection of the lanky Marshall, who is over six feet tall and still weighs only 179. Only his 19th pro bout for Marshall. switch styles at Marshall in the white trunks going south ball for just a second then back to the regular or orthodox style okay. round one with one minute remaining remaining in the round now.
And round one is over, ladies and gentlemen. A bit about Marty Marshall now, who has had only 18 pro bouts. However, he turned pro in 1950 and hasn't had much luck in getting bouts. His best wins are over Westbury Bascom in eight, and then that startling knockout over Bob Satterfield in just two rounds recently. And this, as we told you, is his first chance at the real big money. That's the corner of Marshall, who strutted back to his corner and had the fans uh, laughing quite a bit. Over to Harold Johnson now, who has been uh, a great light heavyweight for quite a while, 26 years of age, making his 57th professional appearance. He's won 49, lost seven, and has scored uh, 22 knockouts in his uh, career in the ring. That uh, extends back some four years. Ready now for round two. And here it is from the Detroit Olympia in Detroit, Michigan. the third man on the ring and very efficient. Marshall at 179 in the white trunks. Harold Johnson in the dark trunks. Love you, Marty. who has had plenty of difficulty getting fights is employed in a rubber plant and hopes to be able to spring from this one on to some of the bigger money. Marshall, who prefers to counter, trying to force Johnson into the lead there. Notice how high Harold is keeping his hands tonight. As Marshall came uh, lunging in, he let out a war hoop. One minute remaining. Round two. Okay. After looking at it for a couple of rounds, would you uh, describe the style of Marshall as unorthodox or just plain screwy? Anyway, he's a tough guy to fight. Johnson's been under that swinging left hand all night. In the dark trunks, he's outweighed four and a half pounds by Marty Marshall, who weighs 179. Marshall in the white trunks, neither man has been down and I think that is more of a slip. Let's see. Lou Handler calls it a slip. There is no knockdown. They will have the mandatory eight count in the event of either man hitting the deck. Score the winner for each round on your scorecard. Ten points. The loser, nine, eight, or seven if he's been down. Which Marshall almost did right there from that stinging overhand right. Round three.
down three, about half over. and try to make Marshall do a bit of the leading now. Marty has a three-inch reach on Johnson. One minute remaining in the third round. boys starting to open up a bit at the end of round three. Round four, that is the very colorful, oh, Marty, tough to hit Marty Marshall in the white trunks against Harold Johnson in the dark. Marshall keeps that left hand most of the time. You would think that that right of Johnson's could get in, but Marty's reflexes are very good, and he's been under the right hand. Round four with two minutes remaining. Marshall. The six to one underdog his last time out and he knocked out Bob Satterfield in two rounds and had him down four times. That bout was in Chicago. <laughs> right hand starting to get in now by Johnson. One minute remaining in round four. spidery arms of Marshall make infighting very tough against him as he ties Johnson up beautifully once he gets inside. Round four nearly over. the Detroit Olympian. This is round five of the scheduled ten rounder between Marty Marshall fighting out of Detroit and Harold Johnson out of Philadelphia. There have been no knockdowns and well 
Well, let's say that the styles of both men have been very confusing so far. Marshall's been unable to tee off on Johnson. And Harold, in round four, landed a couple of stiff right hands to the jaw of his lanky opponent in the white trunks, Marty Marshall. right on the bridge of the nose. He fell right into the clinch. Johnson had a chance to get Marshall in real trouble there, but he spun out of that corner. Incidentally, is working on a streak of 12 straight wins, four in 1953 and eight in 1954. Of course, Johnson is by far his most rugged opposition of his uh, career that has seen him in 18 pro bouts. seconds remaining in the fifth round. Oh. And now round six from Detroit. That's the corner of Harold Johnson, high ranked in the light heavyweight division against Marty Marshall, who has been ranked 10th after his uh, recent KO of Bob Siderfield. You can hear Lou Handler's voice all the way down here to our Pabst Ribbon microphone telling the boys to punch their way out and quit holding. Marshall is in the white trunks. Neither man has been down. this martial style you never know where he's going to come from next <laughs> Man to fight. 
One minute remaining in round six. Come on, Marty, work on him. seconds remaining in the sixth round. And now we're ready for round seven. The warning whistle had just blown to get the seconds out of there. As Pabst Blue Ribbon brings it all to you from the Detroit Olympia. That's the corner of Marty Marshall with his seconds talking to him. He weighed in at 179 today at noon. Harold Johnson, 174 and a half. Johnson is on the dark trunks. And Harold, by far the more experienced boxers, had great difficulty in solving the spider-like style of Marty Marshall. Both boys appear to be in splendid condition. Only mark of battle so far is the nose of Johnson is slightly swollen. of course the favorite here as the crowd rooting for him to pull the upset and either stop Harold Johnson or get the decision every once in a while as uh, Marshall is launching a blow he'll let out a yell remaining in the seventh round. punches by Harold Johnson here toward the end of round seven. <laughs> Talking about the record of uh, Marty Marshall, he beat Herbie Moore in 10, he stopped Calvin Butler in four, whipped West Bascom in eight, knocked out Herbie Moore in a return in two, one in 10 over Arthur Wright, Beat Sonny Liston at eight, stopped Tony Lamonaco in four, and then knocked out Bob Satterfield in two rounds. There's a fellow that has a 12 fight streak going on all on the win side. Although he's had only 18 pro bouts since he turned pro in 1950, and he was proclaiming to everyone that will listen today that they just won't fight him. Well, 
He's a tough uh, customer to fight in there. That's very obvious against the seasoned veteran Harold Johnson, who is in there for his 57th time. Marshall in the white trunks. Harold Johnson in the dark trunks. Need a man down after seven rounds. Johnson's corner yelling to them to, yelling rather to Johnson to work downstairs and to work often. Marshall's ability to tie Harold up in the infighting has kept him from being able to do too much of that midsection. Johnson scoring stiffly with the right and then the left. With two minutes remaining in the eighth round. If Marshall didn't uh, warn you by telegraphing his right hand, he yells as he throws it too. So you've got double warning that he's going to punch. He lets out with a real hup. are all taking up the crowd now. Help him one, Marty. One minute remaining in round eight. David made a prediction before the bout tonight. He said he didn't know that Marshall would defeat the tough Johnson, but that he would go the distance with him. from the Detroit Olympia. Harold Johnson in the dark trunks. Marty Marshall in the white. Neither man down or anything close to a knockdown so far tonight. With Marshall relying on quite a bit of the Roomba, the Foxtrot and an occasional Devot thrown in to confuse his opponent. Marshall down from that straight right. Two, five, six, seven, eight. The mandatory eight count. Lou Handler wipes off the gloves and his eyes are blurry as he gets up. And there's a long time left in round nine. Two minutes remaining in the round. Johnson getting that clean right hand shot to the chin. his mouthpiece and referee Handler is looking very closely at the action to see if Marshall is in shape to continue. A minute and a half remaining in the ninth round.
One minute remaining in round nine. Marshall trying to weather the storm. His eyes still foggy. Seconds remaining in round nine. Marshall pedaling about on very weary limbs. Johnson looking for the clean shot at him. Weathers the storm after being hit with a devastating right hand. He dropped that uh, left hand of his once too often, and Johnson got the clean shot to the chin. And they're working on him over in his corner, and he appears to be all right. They had to retrieve his mouthpiece, which uh, Lou Handler had thrown out of the ring as soon as uh, Marty Marshall had the mouthpiece uh, knocked out of his mouth. So we'll see if he's going to be able to come back and make a good showing here in round 10. He was knocked down in the first minute of round nine and his eyes were very blurry. And as a result of that, the referee Lou Handler stayed very close for at least 30 seconds to be sure that he had recovered and was not in danger of serious injury. So we're ready now for round 10 as Harold Johnson solved the baffling style of Marty Marshall in round nine. And Harold, as we told you, anxious for a big win, an impressive win, after a couple of recent disappointing showings, will more than like to be out for the KO. In the white trunks, Marty Marshall, in the dark trunks, Harold Johnson of Philadelphia. Johnson in round 10 fighting very cautiously has not been able to find the vulnerable spot. Marshall switching from the right handed stance to the southpaw style back and forth. Causing Johnson some trouble in round 10. One minute remaining in the 10th round.
Marshall apparently will go the distance. There's very little time remaining in the 10th round against the rugged Harold Johnson. And it's over. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. Marty Marshall and Harold Johnson of Philadelphia. I'll remind you that over... Um, as soon as we get our decision over many of these stations on the first program of Red Barber's Corner, we'll have a couple of very fine gentlemen we'd like for you to meet, Senator Estes Kefauver of Tennessee and Arch Ward, the great sports editor of the Chicago Tribune. I'll remind you again about the scoring. The winner of the round will get 10 points. The loser, 9, 8, 7, 6, so forth. There was only one terrifically decisive round. That was round nine when a clean overhand right by Harold Johnson landed flush on the button of his opponent, Marty Marshall of Detroit. And we wondered at that time if he was going to be able to weather the storm and go all the way. Lou Handler, Bill Appleton, and Joe Lenahan are getting ready to give Roy Tracy their ballots now. And we'll have the announcement of the winner. And here it is. Your attention, please. Another contest will follow. Here's the decision. Judge Lenahan votes his card. 72, 98, favor of Johnson. Referee Lou Handler votes his card. 82, 96, favor of Johnson. Judge Bill Appleton votes his card. 82, 95, favor of Johnson, the winner of unanimous decision, Harold Johnson.